Follow Name Explain on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as joining my Facebook group, Friends of Name Explain, where you can chat with myself and many other name nerds. Check out the links down below. In medieval Britain, there was a tradition. When the king would hold court, the tradition was that the earls would always be the ones to arrive first. They would get there before the king, the dukes, the barons, and even all the spectators. They would then set up the court, light the candles, plump the king's throne, all that sort of stuff. Then, way after them, everyone else would turn up. Eventually, people started to notice this fact. People realized that earls had this habit of arriving at the court way before everyone else, and when other people in other parts of the country started to arrive at places before others. It got compared to these earls. They were described as being earl-like. This eventually gave us the word of early, to describe someone getting somewhere way before others, much like an earl of old England. That's a pretty fun story to say the least, and the neat origin of the word early. I mean, it would be a fun story if it was true in any way whatsoever. Yeah, that etymology of the word early, I just completely made up. In reality, the term of early comes from muddled old English roots with their word of ear, meaning soon. But that story is nowhere near as fun. Nevertheless, stories like the one one I just concocted, ones that detail the interesting origin of words, are prevalent across the globe. Whether they be stories shared among friends in pubs or at home, or spread across social media in more modern instances, these stories are then taken as fact and spread even deeper. These kinds of stories are known as folk etymologies, and they can be kind of a nuisance to people who want to know the actual origin of words. They're a nuisance for a few reasons. Firstly, because they obscure the truth when it comes to the origin of these words. And the last thing we need on our planet right now is more misinformation. However, a lot of these folk etymologies actually come from pretty unpleasant origins. Many of them exist to reinforce negative ideas about a group of people, which isn't great to say the least. This has led to a huge surplus of folk etymologies on our planet. Some are so well known that they are taken as fact. I wouldn't be surprised if I referenced a couple folk etymologies in my own videos. They are that entrenched. So why do folk etymologies spread so easily? And why are they so popular, despite not being true? Well, there's all kinds of reasons as to why this happens. This video is heavily inspired by the wonderful book Word Myths by David Wilton. The book goes through a huge selection of popular folk etymologies and explains where the myth comes from and the word or term's actual origins. It's a terrific book, and if you're interested, go read it. In the conclusion of this book, Wilton breaks down the reasons folk etymology spread so well into 10 categories. So, spoilers for the end of this book I suppose. The first of those being simply because they're good stories. Sometimes the folk etymologies are such fun stories that we're just compelled to share them. We humans love to share little fun facts. There's an entire industry built on that concept with the likes of QI, Uberfax, and many YouTube channels like this one you are watching right now. The early folk etymology I just made up is a prime example of one that's just a good story. But a more established example has to be the folk etymology of the word news. There's a story that news, as in the thing that tells you what's going on in the world, is actually an acronym of notable events, weather, and sports. This isn't true at all. It just comes from the fact it tells you about new things. Yet, this is such a fun story that it has perpetuated into the public knowledge. The next category Wilson says is that folk etymologies can strengthen and validate group identity. A great example of this is with the folk etymology for the name of America. The name, of course, comes from the Italian explorer Amelago Vespucci, who was the one that realized that the Lamas was not part of Asia, and in turn had the land named after him. One folk etymology about the name was perpetuated by one Jules Marcau in 1875 in an article. He proclaimed that the name came from Native American roots, deriving from the Americu Mountains slash people of Nicaragua. This, of course, isn't true, but a folk etymology like this can give pride to the indigenous people of the land, with the idea that the land has a name coming from one of their languages, and wasn't simply a name imported from Europe. It's a fun story, but like many cases, simply isn't true. Sometimes, however, the opposite of this happens. Folk etymologies can come into being to reinforce negative, racist, and xenophobic ideas about others, as Wilton puts it. These origins aren't great to say the least, but unfortunately, people have used folk etymologies to get their agendas across. An example being a folk etymology for Chicago's nickname, the Windy City.
Garcia. Supposedly editor of the New York Sun, Charles Darner coined the term Windy City for Chicago in 1890, and the wind was a reference to all the hot air that people of the city blew. This of course isn't true, but the etymology spread across New York and then the world, spurred on by the rivalry between the two cities. People enjoy making up mean stuff about people they don't like. This can even be done through folk etymology. In reality, Chicago has that name because it's in fact rather windy in the city. Another reason why folk etymologies can spread, according to Wilton, is because they appeal to our interests. This is especially the case with folk etymologies that relate to sailing and the sea. There are so many words that quote unquote derive from sailors on the sea. These kind of fake stories spread so much because a lot of people are intrigued by the sea, so like the fact that many words and terms derive from their area of interest. Take the term under the weather. There's a story that it relates to sailors who are unhappy, caught in storms and wanted to be underneath all that bad weather. While this makes sense, it isn't the case at all. Seemingly, its actual origins have nothing to do with the sea, but was coined simply due to the fact that bad weather can affect someone's health. Wilton next says that a reason a folk etymology can spread is because they serve a political purpose. This can be pretty unpleasant too, like with the folk etymology for the term rule of thumb. The folk etymology behind this term is that it comes from an old British bylaw that allowed men to beat their wives with a whip or stick that was no wider than their thumb. This is awful, simply put, and the term has no links to wife beating. It simply comes from a thumb being a unit of measurement, like we use feet and hands. Yet this fake story, in regards to the origin of the term, serves something of a dark political purpose, somewhat promoting the idea that it's okay to beat your wife because there's a term that relates to it. It. This kind of folk etymology can also tie into another category Wilton lays out, that being the idea that folk etymologies spread to lampoon the high and mighty. While this rule of thumb etymology can be seen to serve a political purpose, it could also be used by opponents of the idea to point out how awful people in power can be. Another folk etymology like this is with golf. Golf is seen as a sport for the higher classes of society, and people have mocked this fact with the folk etymology that golf is once again an acronym, which means gentlemen only, ladies forbidden. This isn't where golf comes from at all. It's thought to come from an old Dutch word meaning club or bat. Yet this folk etymology can be seen as mocking the kind of people who play golf and their mentality. Golf, as well as the aforementioned news folk etymology, are things referred to as backronyms. This is where we retroactively turn a word into an acronym. They could honestly have a video unto themselves one day. A more niche reason why folk etymology spread, according to Walton, is that they serve an economic purpose. This means that sometimes they can explain why business did a certain thing in regards to their language. A famous example of this is with the Chevrolet Nova. There's a story that this car didn't sell well in Latin America because the latter word can be read in Spanish as meaning no go and no one really wants a car that has a name meaning it doesn't go so they instead changed its name to the Carib. This simply isn't true, a Chevrolet never actually changed the car's name in Latin America and the car called the Carib was instead made by Volkswagen. Yet this folk etymology is used as an example of bad marketing despite the fact it never happened. Another reason why they can spread, according to Walton, is that folk etymology Etymologies can attempt to promote euphemism, ascribing socially acceptable terms to unseemly words and phrases. This means sometimes people try and use made up origins to justify the use of a word considered taboo. A really notable example of this is with a certain word starting with F. The story goes that this word is an acronym, meaning fornication under consent of the king. Supposedly, people at some point could only reproduce with permission from the king. This, of course, isn't true, and that word did didn't come from these origins, but it could be used to explain that this word isn't as taboo as it is seen as being by some. Wilton then lays out that sometimes folk etymologies are made as deliberate hoaxes, as well as being examples of wordplay done for humour. This is simply because people like to make up fun stories sometimes. There was a notorious example of this in the early days of the internet, with an email chain called Life in the 1500s. This email chain explained the origin of a ton of different phrases, like how the term raining cats and dogs relates to pets falling off the roof in a storm, or how the term bring home the bacon comes from people hanging bacon on their walls to show off their wealth. Nothing in this email is true, yet because they were so fun, 
and people didn't fact check them. They were spurred on during the early days of the web as truth. In reality, these are just concocted as a bit of fun. The final reason Walton lays out is that these folk etymologies can explain a mystery to us. Due to the very nature of language, we don't know the origin of every word and term, including some we use every day. So people have made up folk etymologies about these kinds of words to help fill a void. A great example is with the word OK. We only figured out the true origin of the term OK in the 1960s, being that it comes from Boston in the late 19th century, from a fad in the city of making up strange abbreviations. Prior to this, there were all kinds of theories, with the most popular of those being that President Andrew Jackson once misspelled all correct as all correct, and it stemmed from that. So, I'm sure you can understand now that folk etymologies can spread for all kinds of different reasons. Sometimes it's for quite nefarious reasons, and other times it's simply for a bit of fun. So next time you see a word origin that seems a bit too fun, or a bit dubious, take it with caution, whoever it is from, including from this dumb YouTube channel. Also, if you haven't got the idea, go read David Walton's book. They haven't paid me to promote it or anything, it's just a really good book, and this video wouldn't exist in this form without it. This video topic was suggested by Mimi Heart over on my Patreon. Every Wednesday, I put up a video request post over my Patreon for my awesome patrons to leave video ideas on. I then pick one of those ideas to be turned into a video the following Wednesday. So if you have a great idea for a Name Explain video and wish to enjoy Name Explain videos ad free, as well as get exclusive content and your name at the end of these videos, then why not support the channel on Patreon? It takes just $1 a month to help the channel in a huge way and gets you you all of these amazing benefits. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.